Last month, the U.S. Navy announced that their new radar hunting missile is officially moving into its first phase of low-rate production. Now, this is a pretty big deal, because once this missile enters service, it could potentially make stealth unnecessary for huge portions of America's fighter fleets. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Airborne. This new weapon, dubbed the Advanced Anti-Radiation Guided Missile Extended Range, or AARGM-ER, is very similar to the Navy's existing AARGM weapon system, but it incorporates a number of improvements with the specific aim of increasing both range and accuracy. Now, both the AARGM and the new AARGM-ER are anti-radiation missiles, which is probably what you'll hear me call them because it's a lot easier to say. And it means that these weapons are designed to hunt down enemy radio emissions, particularly those that are produced by ground-based radar arrays. This announcement comes on the tail end of the Navy's first successful live-fire test of this missile, which was conducted in July in Southern California. The test took place three months earlier than they initially anticipated, which really may suggest that this weapon is developing even better than the Navy anticipated. The AARGM-ER will leverage a multi-mode guidance package that includes a GPS-assisted inertial navigation system as well as onboard sensors that can continue to track targets even after they turn off their radar, or even if they're moving locations while the missile's en route. In fact, the AARGMER can be fired before it even has a target and can rely on other aircraft that are further ahead to provide it with targeting data while it's in flight. And just to make sure that you know that you got your target, this anti-radiation missile can reportedly relay data back in its final moments to confirm whether or not it successfully struck the target you intended. Now, this missile can accommodate different kinds of warheads. It leverages a new rocket motor and is larger in diameter than its predecessors. It was designed specifically to be carried inside the internal weapons bays of the Navy's F-35C, but it still uses software and even some components from previous iterations just to keep its development and production costs low. But in order to really appreciate how this missile can change the way America leverages stealth, we need to understand what anti-radiation missiles do in terms of America's air warfare doctrine. These missiles home in on the radar air defense systems use to detect and engage oncoming aircraft, which makes them really valuable in the first days of a conflict when America's air warfare doctrine calls for establishing air superiority. As radar arrays come online to detect incoming aircraft, those aircraft can fire high-speed anti-radiation missiles like the AARGM to follow those radio waves back to their source and destroy it. In fact, during the opening days of the first Gulf War, the U.S. sent unarmed drones into Iraqi airspace as bait to literally fool the enemy into powering up their air defense systems. Once the Iraqi radar came online, other U.S. aircraft deployed anti-radiation missiles to eliminate them, making Iraqi airspace much safer for continued air operations, as at the time, the F-117 Nighthawk was the only aircraft in America's arsenal with stealth capabilities. Now, not all anti-radiation missiles were designed for air-to-ground applications, but we can talk about the others another time. Now that we understand how anti-radiation missiles work, let's go back to the AARGM. Now, the Pentagon doesn't offer up hard figures regarding the effective range of its existing AARGM, but the weapons designer, Orbital ATK, stated in 2017 that the Block 1 version in service could engage targets at distances greater than 60 miles. Although you may find in some sources that it's a range greater than 80 miles, but I have yet to find formal evidence to substantiate that figure. At the time, the designs of the ER iteration of the weapon called for at least twice the range offered by that standard AARGM. In the days before stealth became prevalent, using weapons like these to engage and destroy enemy air defenses was really the only way to limit the chances of aircraft being shot down by surface-to-air missiles. 
As such, part of America's air warfare strategy has long included sending fighters out on patrols to look for and engage such defenses, in missions that we often call wild weasels. Once the wild weasels have eliminated all the air defense systems in a given area, the U.S. can send more aircraft in to bolster ground troops or to engage other high-value targets. But like all technology, air defense systems have continued to advance, and today they're really outpacing the ranges offered by most anti-radiation missiles. That means that these radar hunting missions are now too dangerous for fourth generation fighters, like the Air Force's newest F 15EXs or workhorse F 16s, at least in a near peer fight. Today, the plan is to use stealth fighters like the F 35 to fill these vital roles because they stand the best chance at delaying or defeating detection for long enough to engage and destroy these enemy radar arrays. Being able to carry this new AARGMER internally was one of the most significant requirements for this new weapon, as F 35s have previously had to carry their AARGMs externally. Carrying munitions on external hardpoints compromises the F 35 stealth profile, which makes it a lot easier to detect and really cancels out the reason you'd use an F 35 at all. But as important as this development is for stealth platforms, it's more important for non-stealth ones. Earlier this year, General Charles C.Q. Brown, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, indicated that his branch is considering the development of a new, less advanced fighter to replace the F-16. The F-35 was initially adopted to serve as America's new workhorse fighter, eventually replacing the nation's massive fleet of more than 1,300 fighting Falcons, along with a bunch of other aircraft. But repeated setbacks and budgetary overruns have hurt the F-35 standing in that regard. Ongoing concerns about its operational costs may even limit its use in the long run and the volume in which America ends up buying them. The problem with that, as critics have pointed out, is that investing in new non-stealth or less stealth fighters seems like we're working in the wrong direction. After all, the air defense systems being fielded by nation-level opponents like China and Russia are only getting better. And in fact, China's advanced domestic medium range air defense system, the HK-16, can detect incoming aircraft at ranges in excess of 86 miles and can track as many as 48 targets at once. Russia's most advanced air defense system, the S-400, has been called the best in the world and has a claimed range of between 155 and 250 miles. Now, let me remind you that America's existing AARGMs have an operational range of 60 or maybe up to 80 miles, which means American fighters would have no choice but to launch our current radar hunting missiles within range of the air defense systems they're hunting. And that sort of makes the job a suicide mission for anybody with a radar cross section bigger than your Thanksgiving turkey. And that is where the AARGMER comes in. While the range of the Navy's new anti-radiation missile has obviously not been disclosed, holding true to their original requirements would suggest that it's got a range of somewhere greater than 120 miles and maybe even as far as 160. That's well outside the detection radius of China's HK-16, and it's flirting with the outside limits of Russia's claims regarding the S-400's furthest reaching service-to-air missiles. In other words, it's feasible that the AARGMER could engage even the most advanced air defense systems on the planet from too far away to be at risk of being shot down. And that could put fourth generation workhorses like the Navy's FA-18 Super Hornets right back into the fight, despite their lack of stealth. And let's not forget that this approach could be made even more effective through secure data links between forward advancing F-35s and less stealthy jets following behind. There's already been a great deal of discussion about F-35s using fourth generation fighters like the F-15EX as missile trucks or flying magazines, effectively carrying and launching weapons that are guided by the F-35s onboard systems. A data link connecting Block 3 Super Hornets to F-35Cs could likewise enable the stealth jets to fly deep into enemy airspace and then relay target coordinates back to the Super Hornets that are safely out of air defense range. 
Now, I'm not just making this stuff up. The Navy actually intends to arm their Super Hornets and Growlers with this weapon first. And the AARGMER was designed specifically to network with external sources to get its targeting data. This makes the Navy's new radiation hunting missile a force multiplier in a high-end conflict with a nation like China, potentially bringing the fleet of FA-18s out of reserves and into the fray. And if it finds its way to other branches, it could really feasibly do the same for the Air Force's F-15 and F-16 fleets. I mean, especially considering the F-16 has traditionally filled that wild weasel role in modern warfare. Now, I think it's fair to say that nobody wants to see war between the United States and China, and depending on your approach to foreign policy, you may believe that the best way to prevent a war is to position yourself to win it. And the introduction of the AARGMER promises to really bring a huge volume of aircraft back into the fight, because it's important to remember that once all the air defenses in an area have been destroyed, you can fly anything you want over it. Stealth really only matters when there are air defenses left to be. And with that conclusion ends yet another edition of Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment to let me know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.